Welcome to the Jesuit Institute. The Institute will offer the Easter Tridium services online. On Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper will be broadcast at 5.30 p.m. On Good Friday, the service of the Passion will be broadcast at 3 p.m. And on Easter Sunday, Mass will be broadcast at 9 a.m. May God bless you. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole Church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also have a share in his resurrection and in his life. So I invite you, wherever you are, to, at this moment, simply just hold the palm branches or the palm leaf that you have. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite, where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, you shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus. And throwing their garments on the colt, they sat Jesus upon it. And as he rode along, they spread their garments on the road. And as he was now drawing near at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to him, Teacher, Rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On Palm Sunday, we commemorate how Jesus rides triumphantly 
into Jerusalem. And he sets this all in motion by sending those two disciples to make the preparations for the Passover. It's startling because we know the rest of the story. We know that today they shout, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And just a few days from now, they are shouting, Crucify Him. And so it's a, a sober reminder to us for the potential that we all have to be hypocritical. Notice that little jibe at the end of the gospel. Jesus simply seems to dismiss that. But the Pharisees want him to rebuke his disciples. And this dismissal sets the tone for the whole week that unfolds from Palm Sunday. We know that Jesus will be arrested and he will be beaten and he will be unjustly tried and condemned. The political establishment of his time will try to extinguish him like political establishments today extinguish people who are voices of challenge, who speak truth to power. Our invitation on Palm Sunday, I think, is just one simple thing. We're invited to submerge or immerse you, whatever word you want to use, ourselves into the story for the week that lies ahead. We're invited to notice the dynamics in the story, the fear and the hypocrisy, the corruption and the looking for revenge, the kindness and the kind acts that come up in the story, and the cruel acts that we will read. And ask ourselves, how perhaps are these dynamics at play as well in our own lives? We're asked simply to stay with Jesus and to notice his interactions with others, to notice the dynamics and allow ourselves to journey with him through his passion, his death, and next week end to his resurrection. And if we can do that, if we can put time aside this week to journey with him and to notice these dynamics, then indeed our hearts too will be changed and we will come out the other side much more aware of the subtle things that are going on in us and around us each day. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens, he wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know 
that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My My God, my God, God, why why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord. Let him save him. Let him release him, for in him he delights. My My God, God, my God, God, why have you forsaken me? For dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked besets me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My My God, God, my my God, God, why why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O Lord, do not stay afar off. My strength, make haste to help me. My My God, God, my my God, God, why why have you you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my kin and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, Give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the lecture of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. At that time, the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, arose and brought Jesus before Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the multitudes, I find no crown in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he heard that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, 
because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then clothing him in gorgeous apparel, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and after examining him before you, Behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him, neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man and release to us Barabbas. A man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they shouted out, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no crime deserving death. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, whom they asked for, but Jesus he delivered up to their will. And as they led him astray away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place, which is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingly power. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, when the sun's light failed. 
and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the multitudes who assembled to see the sight, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance and saw these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their purpose and deed, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The woman who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Let's pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word as we enter into these days of Holy Week. Let's now bring our own prayers before the Lord. For all those who are unjustly deprived of liberty and life, that they may draw courage and hope from Jesus, who too suffers unjustly. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For us all gather to pray this Palm Sunday, that we may be alert to and conscious of the suffering of those around us and try to ensure that they do not have to carry their cross alone. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all Christians, that we would enter into these days of Holy Week, intentionally putting time aside to journey with Jesus to his passion, death, and resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who administrate our justice system, that they would strive to make sure that justice is done in all cases. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the unjustly judged and condemned, migrants, refugees, the LGBTI community, those living with HIV AIDS, and all those who whose society discards. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we bring before you these our prayers, knowing that you hear them and answer them as you know best through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Butti, our Bishop, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, Let's pray together. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's spend a moment now praying for peace in our own hearts, in our communities, and in our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. Turn and say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.